Alrighty, my lovely Trails fans, welcome back to our next episode of Trails in the Sky. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and talk to a couple of people before we continue exploring the labyrinth. Because we do now have Rene. Hmm. Hmm. Um, Annalise? Wh what are you doing? Well, you heard what Rene said earlier, right? About how this world changes as a result of what the people inside it want. Yeah, but what does that have to do with this? She's desperately trying to wish a stuffed toy into existence with the power of her mind. Hey, I'm trying to concentrate here. Can you be a little more quiet? Should I go with a fluffy, beady-eyed palm? Ooh, or maybe a nice silky bear, or a super soft panda. Hehe, <laughs> there's so many wonderful choices I can't decide which to go with. Concentrate? You can't even decide what you want. At least focus on one of them and see how that goes before getting greedy. <laughs> She's shaking. Oh, poor girl. Hmm, it is an interesting concept, I must say. Who would have thought that this world changes in accordance to the thoughts and desires of those within? If what Rene was saying about discovering that being one of the conditions to moving on to the sixth plane is true, then we must be reaching the end of this particular plane. All this crud about how Phantasm is made up has given me a headache, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out just how strong the fiends in it are getting the further in we go. We're gonna have to get a heck of a lot stronger if we're gonna stand a chance against them. If the world we're in really does change as a result of our thoughts, then we're going to need more than just physical strength in the battles ahead, we're going to need mental strength too. What are the two of you doing here? Oh, Estelle. We were just talking about Rene. The two of you have been trying to find her ever since you left Labelle, right? Yeah, I don't feel like we got to talk to her properly back at the Axis Pillar. There's something I really want to tell her too, and I'm not going to be satisfied until I've done it. <laughs> Still, she looks like she's doing okay. So I think the best thing to do for now is to keep watching over her and see what happens. That might be for the best, yeah. At the end of the day, she needs to be the one who chooses what to do. Nothing good's going to come from pushing her to make that call any faster. I just hope that ending up here with us and everyone else has a positive effect on her. But all we can really do is wait and see, huh? Yes, I think you're right. I can't deny that there's still a part of me that refuses to move on from the past. Sooner or later, I'll have to completely put it behind me and move on. Um, is something up, Colonel? Nothing major, no. I was just lost in thought. In any case, I'd heard rumours about how intelligent young Rene was. Having spoken with her personally, however, they may have been underselling her. Oh, I almost wish I could hire her to work at RNA Research. She'd be quite the asset. <laughs> Guess what? I found a brooch exactly like the ones we brought. We bought a while back there. The jewel in the middle was red, though. Aw, you're so lucky. We're all sold out of those in the shop in Gransel. Ah, I really wanted a red one, too. I know! Why don't we go on a shopping trip together sometime, then? We could go to somewhere really far away. You'd like the Eastern Quarter in Calvert, that's for sure. You could spend a whole day shopping there and never feel bored. R really I wonder what kinds of cute accessories they'd have there. Oh yeah, let me tell you about the pendant I bought a while back. It looks like they're back to good times in no time. Oh, I think... I hope things work out. Uh, I need to switch people around now. So our group is going to be... Rene. Oh, hold on, shit, she said her name then. Leave it to Ren. Okay, so it's pronounced Ren. It's nice to have somebody speak in the third person. So we're going to have Ren and Richard with us. We'll have to go shopping together again sometime. Sure, I wouldn't mind. But first we're going to have to get out of Phantasma, aren't we? Oh, right.
It seems like the situation we're in is even more severe than I feared. We've discovered a number of rules that govern this world, all implemented by that Lord of Phantasma. But what if they created a rule that dictates we can't actually leave this world? It's amazing to think that this world is where people's thoughts become reality. Even after all we've seen so far, I still find myself doubting that could even be possible, but it certainly makes sense. Still, if we assume that everything that's happened so far has gone according to plan for the Lord of Phantasma, then I think it's about time we started trying to change that, hmm? If Ren's theory that this world was moulded into its current form by the Lord of Phantasma is true, I can only assume the rest of the planes in here will be tailored to forwarding whatever their goal is to. I doubt said goal is in our best interests either. Okay, so the equipment we're going with is as follows. This is Reese, Estelle, Ren, and Richard. You can tell they all have something that protects them against Petrify. Oh, there's the artwork for Ren as well. Very murderous. <laughs> Uh, these are our setups for everybody. Ren is going to be a caster. Richard is going to be attacking mainly. Estelle, back to attacking again. Um, and Reese is going to be a caster. Everyone does have some form of healing, I believe. Yes, they do. Reese is going to be the main healer. She can do the large heals and revives now, um, thanks to some of the gems that we got from Ren. Let's go ahead and fill up our craft points before we head out. Have a little drinky drink. And let's head over to the Umbral Midpoint. Okay, so we should be able to just go up here. This path is cleared up now. No chest around there, so through we go. Yeah, it looks like we're back on the Luminous Labyrinth again. Seems a lot more straightforward this time. Alrighty, so we've not used Richard before. Let's see what he's got up. Chain 3, Luminous Divider. So it's a single attack. Attacks with a flurry of slashes before passing through a foe. True Luminous Wheels, a small area, launches a more deadly wheel even further than before, and it impedes. True Luminous Ogre Slash, a single attack, unsheath the sword for a deadly attack, 30% chance to faint. Afterglow Smasher, single attack, unsheath blade so fast that enemies won't even notice it. What is this guy? The, uh, oh, what's, what's Dante's brother from Devil May Cry? I can't even remember. That's the vibe I'm getting from this guy. Um... Alright, well, we've taken them by surprise, so let's just see how much damage it does. It's a decent amount of damage. Uh, who's this? Estelle. Go ahead and thwack them, would you? Uh, ascension. Rene, what do you have? Chain 2? Calamity Throw. It's a line attack. Throws her scythe, rending foes in its path. 10% chance of KO. Blood Circle, 10% chance of KO. Attacks in a medium area. Spinning attack that hits foes in a wide area. Uh, Renade, medium area. Cuts through enemy ranks, taking the lives of its foe. 50% chance to KO. Impressive. And she had the death um, core on her earlier as well, which gives her a 30% chance to instantly kill. So no wonder like she's so good at killing things. Need to have her a little bit more up front, I think. <laughs> Let me go ahead and just do a little bit of repositioning. Uh, battle position. Um, so I have you up there. You can be a little further behind. And Rene too. I think that's pretty good. Celestial Bomb. We are both empty. Oh wow, that's a little insulting.
The other thing's hard to hit, right? So we just want to use Ascension against that. She has a lot of EP. Look at that, 800 EP. I suppose all of her uh, quartz have been opened up to level 3 though, so... I should not really be that surprised. Bring to me the playful minstrel and his closest ally against the beasts they seek to overcome. Only then shall the door open. So that'll be Olivier and Mueller. We will return here after we've finished this area. Uh, let's go down here first. Don't want to cut into our time in the video um, for this episode by going on a excursion somewhere else. Um, let's see, what should we have you do? Dark matter. You go ahead and cut that thing down. You go ahead and use dark matter, and you can go ahead and whack that spider there. It's a shame that Richard didn't get a level out of that. Would have saved me having to heal him. Ambell bracelet. You're the sister here. Does thou shall not steal ring any bells? I don't think I've ever heard about that one. Uh, prevents movement and speed down. Only useful if you fight against something causing debuffs. I don't know if he's actually doing that much damage, or I'm getting like really lucky with his attacks, and he is getting the death strike each time. Oof. She really did not do that much damage. Hold on. Oh, uh, I don't think it's worth the craft points. <laughs> We're good to go. Let's kill the seahorse. Okay, he does actually do that much damage. I don't know why I got her to cast again. She's not set up for casting, she's set up for thwacking. What is her arch strength with her current setup? 904. See how much difference 500 um, arch strength makes? They do like thousands of damage and she does 30. Really does make quite the difference. Yeah, this place is uh, very straightforward. Giardino. Giardino? She sighed in a way that was half frustrated, half disappointed. She never cared about money. Why would he try to win an argument with it? She could only say quietly in her mind, My husband is an idiot. Very good, an upgrade in every way. She's starting to turn more into a, an arts caster rather than a physical attacker. 
Okay, that's going to be a complete waste of time. Uh, so I guess throw out a heal for our friend Richard here. I want to just realize as well, like, look how much further she can attack people because she has held it. Uh, she has range too. Reese learn chain three. Very good. Three thousand mirror. Empty. Someone must have taken the chest phrase that used to be in here. How sad. Ooh. That sounded interesting. Was that the the uh, the death noise? not get my surprise attack, so I better hope I can hurry up and defeat this thing. She just meowed? Oh, what a strange girl. Certainly, come on in. Hidako would listen to anything Sato had to say, but no one could know the horrible fate that awaited Hidako this day. Oh, the story's not even in chronological order. Okay, looks like we're about to go into our boss fight here. Out of curiosity, is there anything new for me to buy for people? Any upgrades? Rose Ripper. So we've already got an upgrade for Rene. We have her as an arts dealer right now, so an increase in strength is not super important to me. So I think we're good to go. Do a quick save, even though it auto saves every time we go through. Oh! Is that our exit out of this plane? It does not like there's anything standing between us and it either. Time to make a mad dash for the... Wait. What's up? I can smell the distinctive scent of the underworld, and it grows stronger by the second. What? Are we going to get surrounded by magic circles then? No. This isn't going to come from a circle. It's coming from above! Devil time. Giant stream spiders. Oh, why do I have to be spiders? I hate spiders. Whoa, 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 whoa? Spiders? Oh, how cute. They're trying so hard to be intimidating for us, aren't they? These are the three gl gluttonous Arachne sisters, kin of the 77 devils featured in the Testaments. They weave nightmares and consume the souls of those who wander into the labyrinth. So this is what real devils are like, huh? They sure look the part. But they're not going to be enough to stop us. Let's get nasty. Right. Ugh, mini spiders. Shadow spider. Uh, servants of the Arachne sisters crawls rapidly and sinks its poisonous fangs into prey. Uh, Arachne, Evros, Gryar, and Thalia. Youngest of the three sisters, sets an evil swarm on foes and lowers their stats. Oh wow, these are actually debuffers. Causes status with her cold stir, calls for aid when hurt, and screams on death. Alrighty. 
looks like we've got a couple of criticals and strength bonuses we can make use of, so I'm not going to use our S-Crafts just yet. Um, what would be useful to have you do right now? I guess just attack these normal. Um, she does actually have a move which hits more than one, so I think we're going to make the most of that. Try and take those three down. Upon the golden wings of battle. Okay, still. Let's get rid of the debuffer. She's going to be the most irritating. Um, let's go ahead and try and get rid of that weaker one. Right, everything has a 50% chance to die. Finish off her. It's probably be overkill, but at least she'll be dead. Yeah, that was definitely overkill. Okay, she's planning on casting an art. Do you have anything to prevent arts? Let's see if that works. Oh no, that's going to be a waste of time. Ooh, she heals people. That's going to be irritating to deal with. Let's go ahead and get rid of you. I have to focus on you because you are going to become very annoying very fast. At least we know she resists that, so there's no point in trying that again in the future. What just happened? Did I did I forget something in her description that she does? Zygma, mother of the Arachne sisters, calls for aid when injured, drains vitality when angered. Oh boy. Okay. How are we doing here? She drains vitality. Okay. He needs healing like yesterday, so... Okay, I can get that healing in before anything else happens. So I can focus on attacking again. See what this looks like at least. Let's 
do a heal. And there we have it. Dies in a massive explosion. And we are safe. I don't know what she said, but it sounded like she said, Haha, I'm a Terminator. Reese learned Arc Fencer 2. Oh, got a sapphire gem from that. What was up with that last one? That was so unfair. That must have been Zygma, the Three Sisters' mother. And even she was not able to stop us, thankfully. That's a different colored ceiling stone. What? That, that looks like... Another ceiling stone, huh? I honestly figured Renz was going to be the last. Huh? So I was in a pretty stone like that when you found me too? I feel like a princess in a fairy tale. <laughs> you kind of were like a little princess actually. I think this one may actually be different. The other stones had a strange sense of warmth when you held them. Not so for this one. Really? Is it because it has something bad in it? No, instead of the usual warmth, it seems to have a cool, almost divine feel to it. Almost as if it might contain the goddess herself within. Huh, <laughs> sharp as usual. He's here. Who's that? So you decided to show your face again, did you? <laughs> the priest is still unconscious, I see. What a shame. I was rather surprised to find out that he can only use his stigma's power against heretics. Even power of that magnitude is meaningless if it's so limited and has such repercussions. I almost pity him. To tell you the truth, I wasn't expecting you to reach this point so quickly. The final piece is inordinarily capable. Oh? Might you be referring to me? Thanks to you. I ended up having to make my appearance sooner than I was expecting. I suppose I should have expected no less from the host of Granzel's finest tea party. <laughs> That's very true. Regardless, I came to fulfill a duty, and fulfill it I shall. Think of that stone as a gift for gathering all the pieces scattered throughout Phantasma. It contains not an additional piece, but a rule book of sorts that you may find beneficial. A rule book? That certainly explains why it feels different compared to the others. Could this mean that you're finally ready to face us head on rather than continuously taunting us? Whether that time comes in, whether that time comes is entirely up to you. For now, all I will say is this. On the next game board, all of you will find yourselves face to face with a number of trials to overcome. He's escaping again. W wait a darn minute. Is that all you've got to say? What kind of trials? <laughs> a variety in all shapes and sizes. Even I will be one of them. You? Really now? I eagerly anticipate seeing whether you are able to overcome them all and make it to me. Don't disappoint me now. Oh. It's almost as if he can't help but try to taunt us. He stays just long enough to say something cryptic and then leaves before elaborating every single time. Oh, I just love those types. Is something wrong, Estelle? Oh, it's nothing. Anyway, we might have got nothing but cryptic teasers out of him, but we do have a new ceiling stone to unlock. I think we should head back to the garden and get to it. I agree. I'm quite curious as to what this rule book is as well.
way it glows is pretty different compared to all the other ceiling stones. You're right. I wonder who's going to appear out of it. Chloe? Is something wrong? No, it's just... The light radiating from it feels somehow... Nostalgic. Huh? That comes as no surprise. It's her. What? She looks like... I'm so glad I can finally communicate with you like this. <laughs> I wonder how many hundreds of years it's been since I was last able to hold a true conversation. Y your Highness? Wait. You- you aren't- are you? It's a pleasure to have the chance to meet one of my own descendants. And allow me to extend a hand of welcome to all of you visitors to my garden. My name is Celeste. Called it. Told you. Like, back in the Grand Soul episodes, I was like, that's going to be Celeste the Ausleys. Celeste the Ausleys. Oh, come on. That's it. That's the end of the chapter. Uh, well, things are definitely getting well we'll finally get answers to our questions i think we're starting to get to the end of the game now uh yeah i've been enjoying it so far um don't know about everybody else who's watching but please let me know in the comments below if you have been but anyway don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you know when the next episode is coming out and i will see you all on the next one bye bye for now